Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at Marie Curie's affair and the duels that followed. Marie Curie and her husband Pierre were no strangers to the press. In 1903, the pair won a Nobel Prize in recognition of the extraordinary services they have rendered by their joint researches on the radiation phenomenon discovered by Professor Henry Bacquerel. Their relationship was a happy one, with each of them being on an equal intellectual footing with the other. They celebrated their Nobel Prize and continued their work. But after a few years, tragedy struck. In 1906, Curie's beloved husband died in an accident. On the afternoon of April the 19th, Pierre was crossing the street in heavy rain when he was run over by a horse-drawn carriage that was carrying a large load of military uniforms. Needless to say, he was killed instantly. Though she was heartbroken, she refused the pension that the French government offered her, noting that she could support herself and her children just fine. In fact, she went back to work soon after Pierre's death and even took up her husband's academic post. Curie wrote, Crushed by the blow, I did not feel able to face the future. I could not forget, however, what my husband used to say, that even deprived of him, I ought to continue my work. It probably isn't surprising that Curie eventually moved on in other ways too. She was only 38 years old when she was made a widow, after all. Soon she set her sights on Paul Langevin, her husband's former student. A brilliant man, just as committed to science as Pierre was, he would be able to fill the void left by her deceased husband. Plus, he was good-looking and had a, to quote, thriving moustache. So what wasn't there to like? Well, there was only one problem, and that was that he was already married. Nevertheless, Curie and Langevin wrapped themselves up in a steamy affair. Langevin was no stranger to extramarital relations. His marriage wasn't a happy one, with his wife reportedly hitting him over the head with a bottle. Although, given his many affairs, maybe it was deserved. She had been well aware of his previous forays with other women, but something about Curie enraged her. So when Madame Langevin found out that her husband and his mistress had set up an apartment where they could meet in private, she had someone break in. The thief took intimate letters from the house, and Madame Langevin threatened to expose the affair to the press if it didn't stop. The affair then either continued, or Madame Langevin went back on her word. Three days before Marie Curie won her second Nobel Prize, Madame Langevin leaked the letters to the press, declaring that she wanted money and the custody of the Langevin children. The newspapers went wild for the story. They painted Curie as a seductress who had lured a family man away from his good French wife and his children. It was an easy thing given the prejudices of the day. Curie was a foreigner, being a native of Poland, and they inaccurately reported that she was a Jew. The papers started rumors that the affair had started when Pierre was still alive. These allegations were also untrue, but it sullied Curie's name enough that the Nobel Committee asked her to stay in France rather than travel to Sweden to accept her reward. They shuddered to think what would come of an adulteress rubbing shoulders with the King of Sweden himself. Albert Einstein, on the other hand, jumped to Curie's defense, saying she ought to come to Sweden regardless of the allegations. I am convinced that you should continue to hold this riffraff in contempt. If the rabble continues to be occupied with you, simply stop reading that drivel. Leave it to the vipers it was fabricated for. Meanwhile, there was not just one, but two duels fought over the incident. One was fought between two editors of rival papers, M. Chevet and Gil Blas and Leon Dordé of L'Action Française. Their argument was about the merits of Madame Langevin's charges. The duel was fought with swords, and after several fierce bouts, Dordé was injured, and the two reconciled. The other was fought between Paul Langevin and Gustave Terry, a journalist who had called him a bore and a coward. Langevin didn't take kindly to the incident and demanded a duel to be fought with pistols. Elaborate preparations took place, but the duel resulted in nothing. Terry refused to shoot on the grounds that he did not want to rid France of one of its greatest minds, and Langevin declared that he wasn't an assassin and put his gun down too. The publicity effectively ended the affair. Langevin and his wife were able to settle their differences outside of court and later reconciled, though Langevin did go on to father an illegitimate child with his secretary. Curie traveled to Sweden against the advice of the committee and accepted her second Nobel Prize. Afterwards, she sat down to an 11-course meal with the King of Sweden, which went smoothly. She was the first person, man or woman, to win a Nobel Prize twice. Unfortunately, though, she paid for her work with her life. In 1934, she succumbed to aplastic anemia, the result of prolonged exposure to ionizing radiation. Her work notes, even today, are still too radioactive to handle without proper protection. Bonus facts. 
Though Curie and Langevin never got back together, it wasn't the end of Curie-Langevin relations. Curie's granddaughter actually ended up marrying Michael Langevin's grandson. And now for another bonus fact. Not only did Marie Curie win two Nobel Prizes, but her family has been the recipient of five total Nobel Prizes. She won two, her husband Pierre Curie won one, her daughter Irene Joliot Curie won the Chemistry Prize in 1935 with her husband. Her second daughter was also the director of UNICEF when it won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1965. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And also, I'd like to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're also interested in becoming a patron and helping us fund this channel and keep these videos coming every day of the week, please do head over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. It's not a one-way street either. We've got plenty of cool perks over there, t-shirts, hoodies, all sorts of different things. I think there's like 10 different rewards that we're giving to people who support at different levels. So if you're interested in that, as I say, just head over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out, link in the description as well. And as always, thank you for watching.